Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's very, it's very interesting and uh, unusual and weird experience for me to be, be talking um, in my hometown, which is... Uh, <laughs> um, now, amongst the, uh, the, 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 the books that Constance uh, mentioned when she was introducing me, um, Hitchhiker's Guide, Dirt Gently, and so on, was not my favorite book. And my favorite book is what I'm here to talk about tonight. Uh, it's funny how... how um, how often, virtually every author I know, their own favorite book is the one uh, that sold the least. It somehow, so it's, it's the runt of the litter. It's, it's the one you always just sort of love the most. And I want to tell you about how this came about. Um, sometime in about the mid-1980s, the phone rang. <laughs> and the voice said, we want you to go to Madagascar. <laughs> we want you to look for a very rare form of lemur called the eye eye. The plane leaves in two weeks. We'd like you to be on it. Now, I, assuming they got the wrong number, said yes before they could discover their mistake. <laughs> um, but in fact, it turned out that they decided, um, well, Here's somebody who doesn't know anything about lemurs, anything about the I.I., anything about Madagascar. Let's send him. <laughs> and um, so I started to try and find out something about it. And it turns out it's very interesting. Um, um, lemurs used to be the dominant primate in all the world. And they were very, very gentle, pleasant creatures. They were a little bit like sort of, about sort of cat size. Um, and um, they used to hang around in the trees having a nice time. And then Gondwana land split up. There's always like, sounds like some sort of 70s rock group going their own way for <laughs> reasons of musical differences. But as you probably remember, uh, Gondwana land was, um, was that vast continental landmass that consisted what then became South America, Africa, uh, India and Southeast Asia, Australasia, uh, oh, no, Australia, Australia and not, and this will turn out to be significant later, not New Zealand, which turns out to be just a lot of gunk that came up from under the ocean. <laughs> And as I say, lemurs were, 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 were dominant, the dominant primate around the world. And when, when, when all these land masses split up, and Madagascar was one of them, Madagascar kind of sailed off into the middle of what then suddenly became the Indian Ocean um, and took with it a representative sample of the livestock of the period, which included a, a, a lot of lemurs. And um, they basically sort of sat there for millions and millions of years in glorious isolation, while in the rest of the world, a new creature emerged, a new creature arrived that was much more intelligent than the lemurs, according to it, much more, <laughs> much more competitive, much more aggressive, and incredibly interested in all the things you could do with twigs. Twigs were absolutely wonderful. There's so much you can do with twigs. You can dig in the ground for things with twigs. You can burrow under the bark of trees for grubs. You can hit each other with twigs. If there had been copies of Twig User magazine around in those days, these creatures would have been, would have been lining up for it. Um, and these creatures, which were, as you probably guess, called the monkeys, because they were more competitive and more aggressive, and they lived in the same habitat as the lemurs, they successfully supplanted the lemurs everywhere in the world other than Madagascar, because Madagascar was right out in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and they couldn't get there. They couldn't get there until about 1,500 years ago, when due to startling advances in twig technology, <laughs> They were able to get there in boats and eventually planes. And suddenly, the lemurs that had had this place to themselves for millions and millions and millions of years were suddenly facing their old enemy, the monkey. So this is Madagascar. 
And it turns out that the rarest of the lemurs, and when I say the rarest of the lemurs, at this particular point in the mid-80s, they were thought to be the rarest of the lemurs, uh, we've now discovered an even rarer lemur called the, uh, the golden bamboo lemur, which went straight to the number, number one of endangered lemurs. Um, uh, but the ai is a very, very peculiar animal. It looks like an agglomeration of all sorts of other different animals. So, for instance, it has, um, it has a sort of fox's ears, and it has little sort of bitey rabbit's teeth, and it has um, a kind of ostrich tail, as a, as a ostrich feather as a tail, um, and it has, it's, it's, it has very weird eyes. There's, actually, there's, it, 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 it has Marty Feldman's eyes. <laughs> Uh, they're kind of sort of looking slightly beyond you into a sort of other dimension just over your left shoulder. Um, and, um, but it also has one very, very, very peculiar characteristic, which is its middle finger on both hands is skeletally thin and very, very long. <laughs> and it turns out there's only one other animal in the entire world um, that has this feature. And this is uh, called, I, I love zoologists to have such vivid imaginations, uh, it's called the long-fingered possum. Um, <laughs> and this is a creature that lives in New Guinea. Uh, and in fact, it has, uh, it's, it's its fourth finger that's skeletally thin and elongated. And this, this is the thing that tells us that there's no relationship between these animals. It's pure convergent evolution because the, the, fa the common factor between Madagascar and the Aiai and New Guinea and the long-fingered possum is that in both habitats, there are no woodpeckers. <laughs> and you see, the thing is, life is very, very, life is very, very op opportunistic, and it'll take advantage of any food source it finds uh, uh, around the place, and if, uh, if there are no woodpeckers looking, for the bark, uh, looking under the bark of trees for grubs, then, um, then, in this case, it'll be the mammals uh, that, that grow this skeletally thin long finger to burrow under the bark of the tree and, and get at this source of food, which is the grubs under the bark. So, the eye eye is this very, very, very strange creature. And at the time, at this time, it was thought there were only about 15 of them left. And um, they lived actually not on Madagascar itself, but on a tiny little rainforest island just off the coast of Madagascar called Nosy Mangabe. And it was just off the northwest tip of Madagascar. Now, to get there, what you had to do is you had to fly in a 747 to Madagascar and then in a terrible old jalopy of an aeroplane from Madagascar up to the, nor up to the northwest port. And from there, you had to go in a kind of decreasingly excellent series of carts and trucks and so on um, uh, to a little port where there was going to be a boat that was going to take us to Nosy Mangabe. So we arrived there and arrived at the port. And we were looking around for the boat that was going to take us to Nosy Mangabe, and we couldn't see it. And we kept on asking people, you know, where's this boat? And they would say, it's there, it's there. And we couldn't see what they were pointing at, because there was this terrible, rotting old hulk in the way. <laughs> um, 